Hi, we're the Carolina Cashers, and we march not because of Democrats or Republicans, not because of conservatives or liberals. We march for what's right for our people and for our children. What do we want? Just this! When do we want it? Now! All right. The video you're about to see shares images and voices. It's a mere glimpse of why tens of thousands, make that hundreds of thousands of people in the South, are organizing and marching forward together. Economic justice we're marching for. Why are we marching today? High quality education. Why are we marching today so every North Carolinian will have health care? Why are we marching today so that there will be justice in our criminal justice system? Why are we marching today? Because we want our voting rights back. I am joined today by hundreds of other health professionals wearing their white coats who also know that this is an emergency for the people of North Carolina and we have to act. Not expanding Medicaid means this year that 27,000 diabetics will go without medicines and the treatments they need, that 12,000 women will go without mammograms, and 27,800 without a pap smear. But most disturbingly is between 1,000 and 3,000 will die unnecessarily because we refuse federal money to provide Medicaid to our brothers and sisters. We're here because there's too much corporate greed and we have families to feed. There are so few jobs, no decent wages, inequality tops the news pages. CEOs earn more and more while the rest of us grow poor. The bosses want their workers cheap, meek, and docile like sheep. They move their companies south, hoping we won't give them any mouth. Well, imagine their surprise as they watch the South arise. We know that knowledge is power, education is freedom, and the path to opportunity and equality begins at the schoolhouse door. They believe, as we believe, that schools should be for kids, not for profit. If it was not for a praying mother, Praying grandmother and Pender County public school teachers, I would not be speaking before you today. I would not be a first generation college graduate. I would not be a law school graduate. I would not be here before you today proudly as an attorney for the North Carolina Association of Educators. People, I am a living testimony that public schools matter. Low to cut Medicaid for more than 500,000 people in a state of 1.7 million poor people and knowing that 2,800 will die. It's mighty low to raise taxes on 900,000 poor people and, and middle working citizens in order to cut taxes for 23 of the wealthiest families. It's mighty low to end unemployment benefits for 170,000 people who have lost jobs through no fault of their own but give your political appointees uh, salaries that don't even fit their resumes. It's mighty low. It's mighty low to resegregate our schools and to eliminate preschools for many poor children and to cut so much money from public education that we are now 48th in the country, lower than Mississippi. And then on top of that, to fire thousands of teachers and teachers assistants and then remove $10 million of our public money and give it to a private voucher school program. That's mighty low. 
it's mighty low to raise taxes on 89% of North Carolinians so you can give 11% of the richest North Carolinians a tax break. Knowing that this transfer to the top will never trickle down but drain over 10 years 650 million from our budget sorely needed for education, infrastructure, and economic development. It's mighty low for us to sing America, America, God shed his grace on you with one breath and then with the other breath to deny workers the grace of labor rights and collective bargaining. To cut the grace of safety nets to the needy and raise taxes on the poor and working poor. To deny immigrants the grace of fair immigration policies and to undermine the grace due to the rights of women and the LGBT community. It's mighty low. It's mighty low to wave banners and place bumper stickers on our cards saying God bless America, but fail to realize our obligation to bless God by how we treat our brothers and sisters. It's mighty low. After you've committed this, all of these low acts, to then commit crimes against democracy and try to suppress and undermine the right to vote. It's mighty low to gerrymand redistricting, to roll back same day registration, early voting, Sunday voting, remove public finance, refuse to let 16 and 17 year olds pre-register, and to pass voter ID laws that are worse than South Carolina and Alabama. And that a federal judge in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania just said was unconstitutional. I tell you, my friends, in the face of these decisions, we have to look at policy through the moral lens of justice for all and through the constitutional principle of the good of the whole. Kicking hard working people when they're down is not just bad policy, it's against the common good and a disregard for human rights and it is a refusal to lean to the better angels of ourselves. We have come to say to the extremists who ignore the common good and have chosen the low road, your actions have worked in reverse. You may have thought you were going to discourage us, but instead you have encouraged us. And the more you push us back, the more we will fight to go forward. It is our time, and we're on our way to higher ground. Higher ground, where every child is educated. Higher ground, where the sick receive health care, and they are healed. Higher ground, where the poor are lifted and not pushed down. Higher ground, where voting rights are secured. Higher ground, where we are truly one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Higher ground, where all of God's children are seen as special and loved and important. Higher ground, where the powerful seek to serve and not be served. Higher ground, that's what we deserve and that's what we demand. We say to our governor and every governor, and every legislature and every politician. We say this to you in love. Don't you know if you leave the low ground of extremism and go to the higher ground of justice, if you use your offices to help somebody, then your living shall not be in vain.